guest is a, well, a pretty awesome guest. She's a sports reporter. She was a sports reporter in Grand Rapids, Michigan, whose life was changed because she was bored in her house during the pandemic, during the beginning of the pandemic. And she became internet famous by putting college and NFL football teams in uncomfortable meetings. She's the one, the only, Annie, Annie Agar, digital creator and nationwide NFL and college football correspondent and host for Bally Sports Network. Oh, <laughs> hit those over and over i love it i love it i need you to follow me everywhere case so you can intro me like that to everybody <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and book now for the super bowl in case you Perfect. need somebody Perfect. since we'll most likely be there so <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> but uh welcome to the show annie thank you so much for being here of course thank you guys for having me i'm excited thank you we are too we are very excited oh, so we're just gonna jump right into the questions. So when you were a kid, what did you wanna be when you're growing up? That is a great question. So as you probably could assume, I always wanted to get into sports. I wanted to be a sports reporter as I'm sure you wanna be Kaysen or some sort of you know, so social media sports. I always knew I wanted to combine the two. And um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do exactly when I was growing up because sports, you know, you could either play it or you do something in media. And for the longest time I wanted to play, I wanted to be, I was a softball player. So I wanted to go play softball in college. Um, and then I realized I can't really go pro in softball because <laughs> that wasn't a thing. So I wanted to start making money. Um, and I loved the connection that fans have with the athletes that they love. And the only person that can really bridge that gap between the two are sports reporters. And I, I looked up to Aaron Andrews. I looked up to all, you know, all the, the female sports reporters, all the, all the people that made that connection for me. And I wanted to, to do that for other people. Little did I know it would come through social media. But to answer your question, kind of growing up, that's how I saw myself. I wanted to be like the next Aaron Andrews. I wanted to, you know, be able to bring content to the fans like these sports reporters did for me. That's really cool. Um, but what kind of sports did you love growing up? Um, football was my favorite. I, it's the one sport I didn't play, which is actually very funny. But um, I think, well, this is a whole other story, but I was an Ohio State fan living in the state of Michigan. I was going to talk to you about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It wasn't, <laughs> my, it wasn't my brightest moment. My family was not true. <laughs> It was so fun to be, and I kind of talk, we talked about that, or we'll, we will talk about that at this TED Talk that I did. Um, I talk about it in that too, and I loved being different, and I loved the, the rivalry of Michigan and Ohio State, but then when I go to school, especially in high school, guys would make it a point to try and you know, tear me down sports knowledge wise. Cause they'd be like, Oh, this Ohio state fan doesn't know what she's talking about. But the more I had to defend myself, the more I had to learn what I was talking about. And football was the obvious go-to cause that's all we do in the state of Michigan during the fall. Like you, you know, you're, you don't go out on Saturdays and Sundays, you sit at home and watch, watch football, which is hopefully what other families do, but that's at least yes. what my family yeah. did. So I just grew up with that. And that was my comfort zone. Like I researched the heck out of football and made sure I knew what I was talking about kind of growing up just for the fun of it. And then it led into this job. So it worked out really well. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah, I'm honestly, I, I also kind of like uh, searching up football facts just for fun. Uh, they, they can they can be really interesting. Yeah, yep. And it's and the people think there's an off season, but it's a continual thing. You constantly yeah. gotta know what you're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. We have a saying: there's no off season. Yes, that is. Oh, that is so true. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's called the off season, but it's really just a uh, time for fans to rest. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yep. for, for and like study. <laughs> <laughs> so your dad played for the Detroit Tigers Farm League uh, for a bit. And what was that like growing up for a dad who played semi-pro baseball? That's a great question. So um, yes, he played in the minors for a couple of years. He was a relief pitcher and um, he used to, he, baseball was his life. I mean, he, he grew up, he had an older brother and a younger sister, and they were the same as my family. Like sports was kind of what connected all of them. So he, and he grew up very, um, very, very poor and, and had to kind of work his way through college. The way he did that was working, he worked three jobs on top of playing baseball. So he had a, a really big work ethic, which is super important for athletes, but taking that into life, he used to, when he first married my mom, he, they used to joke about wanting nine kids to start a baseball team. You know, that was like that. When I say baseball, <laughs> it's like, that was his life. But, um, but it's, it's great when, you know, I, I used to tell him, I'd say, hey, why did you quit playing? You could have been in the majors. I could have been, had a dad that, you know, was this major league teacher. And right. he was like, well, uh, if I did that, you wouldn't be around. I was like, that's my point. <laughs> so that's hilarious. Is, 
yeah, it is really cool when people find out because they don't, like, he played with, um, you know, with some, some higher up names, like John Smoltz was a, a guy that he used to work in the bullpen with a lot. So he has all these great connections and these great stories, and it's really fun to hear, but he's also taught me a work ethic through playing baseball. You know, he's just, his mentality is you get done what you need to get done. Nothing mm-hmm. else matters. Like you're, you know, you, it, it's, t- t- uh, sports already teaches you teamwork. You know, you, you have to work with other people. You have to um, learn how to follow rules and stuff. So seeing that with him and then that's kind of how he taught us through playing baseball. So that's so cool. That is really cool. Yeah. Man. That's something that I know when we were just kind of in preparation for doing this or having this conversation with you, I was like, wait, what? How <laughs> is that? that? People don't know sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so when I said you researched well, I mean, I mean it. You researched <laughs> Thank well. you. <laughs> so was he all baseball or was he just a little bit football um, in other sports? He played football in high school and then in college, it was all baseball, obviously. Um, and then, I mean, he's still, he's a, I think he's honestly a bigger football fan than baseball now because he kind of, like he kind of lived it. So he knows mm-hmm you know, the behind the scenes and doesn't want right. to talk yeah. about anymore. Um, and he's super humble about it. So you know, he'll, you'll ask him a question and he'll say, oh yeah, you know, ba- Babe Ruth was a tough out back when I played, like that's how long ago. <laughs> so he's, the stories he has are so cool, but he's oh, definitely man. a football fan for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. That is. So um, can you share with my listener about Team Agar and all of the members of that team? Yes, this is a great, see, you guys are so good. Uh, this is segueing in for my dad. So Team Agar, and this is another thing. It's so funny when my videos started happening, people didn't really connect the two because, I, I mean, Agar is not a very common name, but, you know, they, we were so separate. You didn't even really think to connect them both. But my brother, um, who's two years older than I am, he does Ironman races with my dad. Um, and this started back in like 2016, I want to say, um, my brother has cerebral palsy. So he's in a wheelchair mentally. He's, you know, he's much smarter than I am. Don't tell him, (laughs) Um, but really smart kid. And he loves sports possibly more than I do. Like I said, big sports family. So, um, when he was younger, he always wanted to play sports. My family would never put any kind of limits on him. They, they'd say, you know, we know he has this disability, but we're going to get him out there as much as we can. And so, um, as he grew up, when he got into high school, college age, he wanted to compete in something because he couldn't do sports by himself. And so he did a race with this, um, this group that helps special needs kids and pushes them through like 5k, 10k races. Absolutely loved it. So my dad and I looked at each other and we thought, well, why can't we do this? You know? So it started with 10k races. I started kind of running with them and then they took off and and started doing marathons and um, half marathons. And then they did triathlons. So my dad will push and pull and push my brother through these, um, these 17 hour long Ironman endurance races. Incredible. Um, Wow. And my brother's not like, he's like 170 pounds. (laughs) So yeah. So, and it's, it is the coolest thing to watch. He'll pull him, um, in a little boat behind him in the swim, which is two miles. And then they bike for 140, 140, I believe. Um, and then, and that's in like a little, he'll sit in a kind of a tandem bike behind him and then he'll push him in the run part, which is marathon. So, um, absolutely just the coolest thing to see. And it, and it's great for me to see, cause it's a way for them to kind of connect with each other. Cause they, you know, there was a disconnect when my dad's a big sports fan and my brother couldn't play any sports. So this was yeah. a great way for them to be a team, which is why we call it, call ourselves team Agar. I love it. That's really and the cool. Whole family is kind of a part of that team. So yeah. That's so absolutely. cool. And you have a younger sister. I do. Yes. Yep. She is 19. So there's my brother's 27. I'm 25. And then she's 19. Nice. Fabulous. And what's her name? Grace. Hi, Grace. Shout Grace out to Grace. Oh, oh my shout gosh. Out to We're, it's the, it's the <laughs> best thing. My brother and I are super close on, you know, this sports level. We talked about yeah. that. And my sister and I are super close on everything else. So fashion and <laughs> all the good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's incredible. I love that. We are team Romero. Our family is team Romero. So we feel instantly connected to any other family that is a team you know, so yeah. yeah, it's a great way to look at family, you know, it really is. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to agree with teammates either sometimes. Yeah. Them, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, we always say team Romero, we never quit. Nobody ever quits on I team Romero. That. Yeah. I love that. That's you, guys, our motto. You, know, you need t-shirts with team Romero. We do. <laughs> so, um, I, re- I remember you talking about how you want to be a sport, sports reporter when you kid and how old, how old were you, uh, when you decided you wanted to, and, uh, did you have to go to a special school for that? I was, that's a good question too. I was probably, I don't know. I was probably close to your age when I, when I really wanted to get more into sports. Cause I think then I started watching a little bit more. 
Um, and then I could really understand what was going on. And, um, and then when I'm going to school, I went to Grand Valley. So it was a D2 school in Michigan, a D2 college in Michigan. And um, they had a program. It was a sports sports management. And I ended up, I kind of made like a hybrid of the program. So I did a couple of broadcasting classes, but I had a sports management and pre-law major because I loved contracts, like contract law. I absolutely loved that. And then I minored in business. So it's kind of a weird major. So I didn't really go to school specifically for sports broadcasting, but I went for, you know, the sports management side of trying to understand the industry a little bit better. That is, that how long of the uh, program did you go through? Um, it was, it's a four, it was a four year program. I took a okay. year because I started working, um, sophomore year at the new station that I worked at the local oh, news station. Okay. So, yeah. So it was great. Cause I kind of just took my time in college and I learned so much from working. Um, mm -hmm. I, that's a, a big advice I'd give to anybody in like, um, you know, what the classes you take are great and what you're learning is great, but I right. learned so much hands-on with the, the pressure of a normal job and deadlines and all that kind of thing that you wouldn't learn in class. So, um, yeah, highly recommend internships, do learning from anybody. People love shadowing too. Like, yes. you know, I love it. If someone came to me and said, Hey, can I just follow you around for the day? Like, yeah, yeah. Let's you know, <laughs> let's go. I don't, yeah. It'll be fun. You'll see what life will be like for you someday. If you want yeah. this job. So yeah. doing that. now were you, um, already happy to be in front of the camera at that point when you got the internship? Or That's a good question. Um, I was, I was very nervous, very nervous. Yeah. To start out. I, when I first started working I, as an intern, I just did, I did a lot of behind the camera stuff, but my, my news director and my boss were great about trying to get me in front of the camera and it wasn't high pressured situations. It was all taped pre-recorded. So if you messed up, you could fix it. So that got me very comfortable being on camera very quickly. Mm -hmm. I'm still going live on some things. I'm like, Ooh. oh, I know. Yeah. You know, I think it, it, if you're not nervous, then there's no pressure to, to perform well. So, yeah. um, yeah, so I was, I was a little nervous at the start, but I always knew that I wanted to be doing something where I could, I could connect with fans or with people one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to be in front of the camera doing something. Yeah. I personally think that you made the very, very perfect decision for you oh, because you, you are a bright, bright light and you oh, are amazing. So had to so tell much. you that. Oh, yeah, awesome. it's true. Oh, I like you guys. I gotta come oh, on. okay. <laughs> We're ready. Oh, and we'll follow oh. you around for a day and we'll see. Perfect. What there you okay. go. There we go. <laughs> uh, so everyone's world was turned upside down in March of 2020. As we mentioned at your intro, your life changed for the better in May of 2020. Can you share with your listener how that happened? Yes. Um, that was, this whole thing has been crazy because, um, like I said, I was working in local news and I knew I wanted to get to ESPN or I wanted to get to a big network. Uh, that was always my goal from when I was younger. But I didn't really, I was, I was following the path that everybody told me to do. So I spoke with people in the industry. Everybody said, you got to do local news. You got to work your way up. You know, that's how you get there. Very so traditional. Like, yes. Yep. Yeah. Which nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, people have tested it. That's how they've gotten there. So sure. I was following what everybody else was doing. And then something happened that nobody knew how to handle with COVID. And so, um, I, my, my family always taught us, and this is coming from my brother who has cerebral palsy, you know, special needs. And he had a, a tough time in life, but they always said, you know, there's positives and everything. You just got to, it's how Absolutely. you think about it. You got to mm -hmm. figure out how to turn your thinking from negative to positive. Mm -hmm. And so when COVID hit, I was, it was tough because I wasn't working. Um, I graduated college. I was moved back into my family because I wasn't making money because we didn't have any kind of local news to cover. Um, and it, everybody was like down and it was like a dark cloud and it just mm -hmm. was a lot of negativity. And yeah. I missed, we had just ramped up talking about the big 10 because spring games were starting and I missed that that talk and the talking about the rivalries and how the season was going to look and what players look for and stuff like that. So I thought we got to, there's got to be something here because we don't have anything to talk about sports wise. And I, I can't tell you what made me think of it. It was, it was on mother's day, which is so funny. Oh my, my goodness. That's funny. hilarious. My mom will tell you, she had, she was praying for me. So she had something, <laughs> something like that. but um, I was on mother's day. I just had this idea to do a zoom call with the big 10 as if they were trying to figure out what would happen during the yeah, season. Yeah. Um, and, and it, yeah. And it just, it just went from there. And it's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you okay. so much. I was shocked. I was really shocked. <laughs> yeah. How was that wake? Like what was, okay. So I have to know, and I'm sure our listener would love to know this. What happened? So let's say you post the video and then within how long was it that you were like, okay, wait a second. This is bananas. 
So I posted, I just had gone on TikTok. I didn't really mm -hmm. know how to use TikTok. Yes, right? it, yeah. My younger sister was like teaching me and she thought I was hopeless case. Um, <laughs> I got, got on TikTok and I posted it. I think it was on the Sunday. I posted it on Sunday. Didn't mm -hmm. really think much of it. It got a couple likes on TikTok, you know, sure. things are kind of happening. And then someone actually tweeted it out on Monday. Yeah. And um, a completely separate account. And then people were tagging me in it, you know, like giving me credit for the video. So then I quote tweeted, all right. Yeah. I think I shared it or quote tweeted it. And it like with all, I think within the day, I mean, I've never gotten that many notifications and I, I had a million wow. views, I think by the end of Monday. So wow. then I started on TikTok too. So it was just, it was wild. Yeah. Like the whole thing was a whirlwind and it, yeah, it was the coolest thing. <laughs> and then all of the responses from people that are in the industry that just, you know, that have been on television forever. And the fact that you were bringing a level of uh, comedy into a time where people really needed it. I think that that is just absolutely wonderful that you shared your gift with literally the world. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That, yeah. That, you know, that comes from my, my dad was always his super sarcastic sense of humor, but he love it. Thing. Whenever there'd be, you know, bad times or my mom would be upset or something, he'd make mm -hmm. a joke, he'd lighten the mood, made everybody more comfortable. Yeah. So I think, you know, I, without even knowing it, I was doing the same thing <laughs> to my life. And hopefully That's others awesome. too. Yeah. So and, and so Kason has a follow-up question. I think that you were saying or that we haven't gotten to yet, but yeah. go yes. ahead. So what has your life been like since then for you? It's been crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I went from um, living, it, and this isn't to say that it happened quickly. I mean, it was a lot of work in between. We could try, sure. you know, try to keep up the videos and everything, but I went from right. working at home to not really having a job to now I work at, you know, Bally Sports, which is mm -hmm. a, a big network. I moved to Chicago. Mm -hmm. I have my own apartment. It's so, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, obviously, I'm very excited about Christmas. I know. I'm it's gorgeous. I up in November, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the earlier um, yeah, the better. Been, yeah, exactly. Um, but it, aside from all that, it's been so cool to connect with the people that I have. Just, um, I think it was two weekends ago when I was at the Michigan game. I went up to Kirk Kirk Street and I said, you know, I, I make parody videos. He was like, yeah, I know who you are. And I was like, oh, okay. That's You're like, wait, cool. okay, yeah, cool. Trying not to talk about a fangirl, trying not to fangirl in front of me. Right. Girl. It was, it's been so cool. The, the connections I've made with people yeah. and, um, yeah. And the amount of people I've taught, like you guys, you know, I would never oh my have, gosh. Been, have been for all this. So I know. Really cool. Well, really we feel cool. really lucky. Oh, thank you. So amazing. <laughs> so recently you were a featured speaker for TEDx Detroit. Uh, can you tell our listener what that experience was like for you? Absolutely. That was, that was probably the coolest thing I've done so far this year. Um, I used to watch TED Talks in college. And I absolutely loved them because they're so big fan. Empo right. They're empowering, they're motivational, but they're very entertaining and the people speak with really well. Yes. So my agent um, reached out. I, I had gotten an agent back in September last year, I believe. Um, and she's been absolutely instrumental in everything. And she came to me and said, we have a possibility of being on this TED talk. Would you want to do it? And I'm like, absolutely. But do they know that it's, it was like two weeks out and I <laughs> so nervous. And I thought these people prepare they must prepare forever because they speak so well. Yes. Um, so she said, no, you'll, like, you'll be great. We'll figure it out. So um, the preparation was, you know, it was a couple, I knew what I wanted to talk about already because it was this positivity and how being, my whole topic was how being different can really be your greatest strength. So I touched on my brother being different, how my family raised us to kind of see things differently and, and how I saw I was able to see a positive out of COVID. Um, and it, it was the cool, like I, I can't even explain the kind of positivity that's at these TED Talks. If you guys ever have a chance to go to one, 100% would do it. I saw the beautiful video that you did um, that you shared on all the socials. And yeah. I was like, I was so happy for you because you really are just so engaging. And to be able to share your story. And again, that's, that's part of your give back. And I love that when people take opportunities and are given opportunities to so turn around and, and share you yeah. know, in light of all that you've been given. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I think, you know, people, like I said, people didn't know, like they didn't know the story about my brother. They didn't know yeah. the family dynamic kind of thing. So it's great to be able to say, I've, I've been able to do this, but let me show you why and where that all mm -hmm. came from. But it was, it was the coolest experience. It was That's awesome. so awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any projects you're currently working on that you want to share with our listener before we go and where can they find you on all the socials? Perfect. Um, so as, in terms of projects, I, I have a lot of, I 
think I figured out TikTok now. Like I know. <laughs> yeah, I would say you have it. You've got it covered. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love TikTok and I utilize a lot of the sounds. So if anybody wants to send me a sound that they want me to use on TikTok for their team, that would be, I think that's my next, I'm going to start in, including fans a little bit more and having them kind of give me ideas Amazing. that way. I think it'll be so fun because I just absolutely love TikTok. So that's kind of on the move. Um, I'm also, I do my weekly recap still. So you can find the majority, of, I mean, there, those are everywhere, but I tweet them consistently at the same time every Tuesday. Um, and on Twitter, I'm at Andy Agar. At, uh, Instagram is Andy Agar 5 I'm pretty sure. And then TikTok is Annie Agar. And Facebook is just Annie Agar too. So. Uh, all right, Annie. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. But b- b- before we go, I have three questions I want to ask you. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. So what advice would you give your 13-year-old self? Ooh, that's a good one. I would tell my 13-year-old self to be just continue to be different. It's okay to not, you know, there's so many people these days, especially kids, you know, maybe your age case and are, are older in high school that think I have to be just like everybody else. And they want the trendy clothes. They want to post the same things on TikTok. They wanted, but being like that won't get you to um, the, the spot that you want to be. You know, if I were, if I had been normal or if I'd been like everybody else, I wouldn't have done these videos. So it's very important to figure out what makes you different and just love that about yourself and really focus on that. Um, and that's what I, I would have told myself at 13 too. <laughs> That's very good advice. And uh, I honestly, that, that also kind of helps me because uh, especially at school, a lot of kids are like, uh, we got to, we got to fit in. Um, yep. But it's, it's, it's okay to, to not be normal or whatever. Yeah. It's like, it's because okay to be you, different. You know, you, the kids at your school, what are they doing right now? And you're, you have a show with the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? And now we have, and now we're speaking <laughs> to Annie Agar. The <laughs> Annie you. Agar. We're yeah. speaking to the great Annie Agar. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. So was there a mentor or teacher that really inspired you when you were growing up? I'd have to say, well, my family in general, but specifically my brother because of his his um, attitude about life. You know, he has every reason to complain. He has a hard time getting up in the morning by himself. He can't really, you know, go to the bathroom. He can't feed himself, but he never complains about it. Constantly has a great attitude. Um, and he, he not only has a great attitude, but he motivates other people to have a good attitude mm-hmm. as well. So no. that, because then if he can't complain, you know, what am I, what do I have to complain about? So right. he's a big factor in my thinking of things positively and in a different way. Oh, that's so good. That is sweet. The team agar all the way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So my final question is one that has stumped many people, pizza or steak. This was a hard one. (laughs) I, I'm going to have to go with steak. I love steak. Probably a lot more than pizza. Even though I'm in Chicago, I probably should like pizza, but you know, I, I got to go with steak. What what about you? And what do you guys like? Um, I'd probably say pizza because you can have a lot more options with pizza. Steak, you mean, this is, this is the big question. Is there pineapple on pizza? Yes. Good. I like. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we have the first disagreement. I guess Kason and Kason and you are no longer friends. You and I, however, are besties. So <laughs> I gotcha. I gotcha. We'll go get our pineapple pizza. <laughs> That's right. That's right. When you come to Nashville, I'm taking you there for we pineapple go. pizza. It's lemon huskies. It is amazing. Perfect. Are you traveling a lot? Um, I will be. Yeah, soon. We're um, we've got some things in the works there, but um. But yeah, right now it's just been a lot of in-studio stuff. And I do, I shoot everything, all my videos, my recap videos from my apartment. So that's been pretty that's nice. That's awesome. But, yeah, well, I, w- I have to ask, do you have a favorite video of all the ones that you have done? I know our listener would love to know that. That's a great question. I really, I love the NFL videos because they're, they're more oh my gosh. drama in them. And they're, it's more, it's more shots at individual players, which they yeah. probably don't like, but the big 10 ones are like a whole other level to me because it's, it's personal because yeah, I'm sure. obviously the first one I did, but I, yeah. I love impersonating Northwestern in Michigan. I, every, everybody in the conference. I love, I love, impersonating. so I think the either the first, I think the second big 10 one I did, which was when they, um, I think it was when they were allowed to play. And that, I think that one was my favorite. I absolutely had so much fun with it and took oh my two gosh. Of shots at each team, I'm sure. But yeah, <laughs> well, and I know I know that we're at the end, but I, since we're still on this, how do you come up with the different, like, or do you take notes or how do you just come up with these videos? Um, I do a lot of listening to the fans. So I'll, mm-hmm. I'll you know, take notes during the games. And uh, like we talked about with that show on Sunday night, we have to know what happened. Yeah. The game. Yeah. So I'll constantly be taking notes all Sunday, watching Red Zone. Um, mm-hmm. But then 
when it comes to figuring out jokes and what jokes will hit and what jokes won't, I go to yeah. social media and I look at what fans are talking about, what's trending, what jokes have they made, um, what do I, you know, what I think I can kind of poke fun at, what I shouldn't probably touch on. <laughs> so yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. lot of figuring out what, because in in a sense, I think that I'm the voice of the fans and I'm hopefully oh, 100%. Dictating what they want their what they yes. want other people to know about their team in this week so yeah and I think you're also saying things that we wish that commentators would say yes yeah. exactly you know <laughs> You get it. Yes. Yeah. And I love Valley for that because when I, yes. when, I you know, when I uh, got, when I was looking to get a job, I thought, oh, nobody's going to let me do these jokes because they're, we're really borderline, <laughs> but that's what makes them funny. You know, I mean, yes. half the NFL, but it's, it's the joke that people know. Yeah. Really make so they, yeah they're so accepting of it like I've, I've made a couple and i'm like are you sure we're going to do this they're like oh yeah <laughs> <All right. laughs> it's they're perfection yeah, yeah exactly so yeah. It's, been, it's been so fun i love it i think one of my favorite things is that you haven't necessarily gone out and spent a lot of money to get all of these different costume pieces and things like that i love that you went to a printer you took it and you, yep. like, you know <laughs> on my shirt nfl or whatever it's great bed, you, know, you should get a jersey for this team and then when i do they're like okay well we missed the logo so i'm like i'll just it's a tape on logo it's it's like a raw you know makes it feel more real like i am in my apartment yeah studio, so. exactly yeah yeah, it's fun. yeah. <laughs> you are the queen of the people thank for, you of thank all you. the fans <laughs> i hope so absolutely oh, oh my right. goodness we've just had a blast talking to you and oh. we can't thank you enough for coming on the show today i know that this is a highlight that end up my 2021 on a big high note oh, good. so yeah we're so very very grateful that. i appreciate you guys i'm so glad we could set it up and everything it was perfect i know it was great so casey do you want to close out our show yes so thank you so much again for taking time on the show today it was honestly an awesome time to talk to you it was so fun. I'm so glad you guys do a great job. And I love the Thank studio. You. Thank you so much. The look is great. <laughs> well, we hope to see you back on the show again yeah, sometime. So. Would you Absolutely. be willing to come back? Anytime. Oh, oh, anytime. oh really? That would Let's be awesome. Of course. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. Oh, thanks so of much. Of course. Thank you, guys. <laughs>